Hi everybody. So this vlog is about something we've been dealing with for a while now and I wasn't going to make a video about it until we knew for sure and I don't even I wasn't even sure I was going to make a video about it at all. Um, it's a little bit sensitive topic but if I could help somebody who's going through the same thing with this video then that would make me feel so good so I decided yes I will make this video and it's about autism um, if you've been following Jasmine's updates um, I did updates every month until she was a year and then I did it like a year and a half 18 months um, I think I did a two-year update too but I'm not sure if I did but right now she's two years old and four months and she's still not talking so we took her to get checked out this was about four months ago so the beginning of our journey um, was just happened at home we had two red flags that popped up that we were concerned about number one was um, around 18 months she still wasn't talking or even trying to talk at all and number two was she always had to put things in her mouth still like a baby would but it was so much more than a baby like everything had to be in her mouth um, a toy she would just suck on it she wouldn't play with it she wouldn't play with any toys she would suck on a toy or she would suck on a can or a spoon she loves sucking on spoons and that's all she did to play so I have two nephews and I, you're not supposed to compare kids and I'm not comparing my kid to anybody but there's certain things that two-year-olds do and one-year-olds do and all the charts and stuff that say your kid should be doing this by this time and your kid should be doing this by this time and I was lenient with that because every child's different so but there's a point when you're just being lenient with it and completely ignoring it and being oblivious to it all kids are different and all that stuff but she wasn't just different she was not showing any signs of maturing in that way so those are two red flags that popped up we still weren't concerned about it at 18 months but we went to the 18 month appointment with our doctor and he asked us a bunch of questions like the 18 month test does she, can she stack blocks can she walk can she do this can she do that blah 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 and the majority of the answers were no she had no words she couldn't talk she couldn't she couldn't stack blocks she couldn't she didn't point to things, she didn't know her body parts, she didn't know animals or animal sounds, she knew nothing on that test pretty much. She can walk and she's she has motor skills, like she can pick things up and walk around and that part's fine, but she just no to everything. So he's just a family doctor. So he suggested we go to a specialist, which is a pediatrician, just a doctor for children. So that was about a two month wait to go to this pediatrician we went there and she asked us a million questions and filled out a bunch of papers and she observed her and by the end of that appointment she said I'm not the one to diagnose so I'm not diagnosing her and I could be wrong but there are some peculiarities with her behavior and the first thing she said was um, it could be autism so that was kind of a shock because we were in denial like we were like she's just a late bloomer she's just this she's just that like she'll grow out of it blah 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 but it, that wasn't the case she said there are peculiarities she shouldn't be doing this anymore she like eating things and she was observing her and she um she was sucking on the strap of the diaper bag and just sitting there and just sucking on it and drenching it in saliva and there was toys in the corner and she was not interested in the toys so in that short time it was about a half an hour appointment in that short time she um, said yes there's peculiarities 
So she said she was going to make a referral to the screening clinic for autism spectrum disorder. Um, it's a place that its main job is to see if your child is likely autistic or not likely autistic. And so she put the referral in and we waited about four months before we got a call. And so they um, just called recently actually. They called at the beginning of November and they made an appointment for um, November 26th to go to this appointment. And I was so happy to get that phone call and I was so happy that it wasn't going to be like an appointment in another three months because she's now two years old and four months and she's not gotten any better. Um, well, she can say things now, but she can say about five words at two and a half years old, almost two and a half. By the time she goes to the appointment, she'll be almost two and a half years old. And she can say five words, and I don't even think she knows what those words mean. She can say, hello, goodbye, um, pee pee, poo poo, because we're trying to potty train her, and daddy and mommy or not mommy, mama. But she doesn't know who daddy is, she doesn't know who mama is, and she barely says mama. And it's very baby-like talk. And she doesn't play with toys still, she's still sucking on things, she's still not social, she doesn't play with other children, she doesn't communicate, there's just so many things she doesn't do. And anytime she does do something, I get excited, and I get, have hope that she's not autistic. Not that, and I want to make it clear that it's not like having autism is the worst thing in the world. And it's not. And if she has autism, it's not a big deal. We will deal with it. It's not a big deal. It's just the sad part. Um, it's just the sad part that she's going to have to work a little bit harder than everybody else. And she's going to be different than everybody else and kids are mean and she might get teased and that's the part that I'm sorry <laughs> um, I've explained this a hundred thousand times so you think I'd be immune to it but it still gets me it's just the part that she might get teased she's not gonna grow up having it easy like everybody else she's gonna have to learn everything in a different way and that's the part that makes me sad if she has it then it's not a big deal. She's just, we're going to give her the best help she needs. She's going to excel um, at what she can excel at, and it's going to be fine. But it's just not what you expect, and you want your kid to, to not have to work any harder than they have to. And she's going to have to work a little bit harder than everybody else to do normal things. And um, that part kind of sucks. But the things that she does do um, make us so happy like, she, if she threw something on the floor and I said, hey, pick that up, she picked it up and she put it back just like that, didn't hesitate or anything. So you have hope that maybe she's not autistic. And then we get a slew of forms in the mail, surveys to fill out, and then it depresses you again because everything you check off is no, 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 she doesn't do this, she doesn't do that, she doesn't do this, and it's like... Like we had hope that she's not and and she and then you read all these things and then you're like maybe she is. So there's a lot of support out there for kids with autism and I'm sh like I'm sure she'll excel even if she has like the, like they send you they send them to camp for free they send them to dance classes they'll cover the cost of that. And I feel like I'm rambling now. She might have autism. That's the whole point of this video. <laughs> but that appointment is on November 26th. I will definitely make a follow-up video telling you if she is autistic or if she's not autistic. Once they discover if she's likely autistic or not likely autistic, um, then the next step is if she is likely autistic, then she goes to, um, I forget, a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I don't know the difference. But she goes to one of those people, and then they give her the diagnosis on paper. So when she has the diagnosis on paper, she the world opens up to all the help that she can get. Speech therapy and this and that and all this kind of stuff. If she doesn't have the diagnosis that she is autistic, then 
the world of help that she could get is limited. So um, the person that inspired me to make this video, um, I don't think I've ever made an emotional video like this before and I wasn't going to make it, but the person that inspired me to do it was Alanda Manda Mommy, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. She has an autistic child. I saw her channel about, like, I saw her channel years ago, and I didn't follow her because, well, my kid wasn't autistic, right? So, um, she obviously stuck out in my mind, though, because when this all came about, I was like, hey, there's a YouTube mom that has an autistic child. I remember that. So I went and found her. Um, oh, I think my baby woke up. I went and found her and I watched all her videos and her videos really helped me. I watched her journey and I knew she went she went through this way before me so I got to see what the steps are and all the tech, like technical terms and everything and her channel really helped me out. So if I can make a video that will help somebody else out with this um, situation then I've done my job. So. That's about all I want to say about this right now. Um, I will definitely update you guys when we have that appointment. Um, and I'll let you know, maybe it's good news that she's not autistic. Even if she's not autistic, she needs some kind of speech therapy and stuff because she's not talking. So um, I will let you guys know. So thank you for watching. Please, if you have any questions, leave them as a comment and I will get back to you. So yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.